Chairman Peter Tom, uh, thank you first and foremost for chatting with me. Obviously, uh, in a long time that you've been at the club now, uh, no disrespect meant there, but it, this must have been one of the tougher periods you've had to go through, especially in the last couple of weeks. No, Sam, it, it's been um, uh, you know a, a brutal two weeks, to be truthful, and, and to have to... Uh, as, as has been uh, talked about with um, Andrea and you and others, for 31 people to unfortunately uh, have left us. And, um, uh, you know, I saw in one of the financial papers today that, you know, 10,000 people were made redundant in the last 48 hours. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I think the impact of the COVID-19 is, is sort of building and building and, and is, is actually, I think, going to be much worse probably for the economy than we realise. I can't not ask you. I know Andrea obviously shared her thoughts on um, Wednesday evening regarding the contract matters and, and those players that have been stood down. I can't not ask you about it. Are you happy with how things have played out? Maybe happy isn't the right word, but if you know what I mean. No, I'm disappointed to a degree that, that these things, which we would have much preferred to have these conversations in, in private, um, had happened. And I fully respect, you know, everybody coming to their own conclusion. At the end of the day, they have to do what they believe is in the best interest of, uh, you know, their family and things like that. So I'm disappointed that, you know, five guys have, have decided that, um, you know, they, they're going to move on. And... Um, uh, but the other, I think the positive side of that, of course, is that, you know, the, the, a very high percentage of the squad, uh, there were no issues, nothing, and, and they all understood the situation and were prepared to accept it and, um, you know, to, to take the Tigers forward. So uh, it, it was disappointing. I'd have, I say I preferred it not to have uh, happened in the media. But, um, you know, the fact was that um, the, these tough decisions had to be made. And... and um, I think now, July the 2nd, you know, we're into the next phase of where we need to be. Are you, are you happy, hopefully I, you don't mind me asking this question, are you happy with how the club handled things from, from our side or your side of, of, of the, the, uh, the conversation? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, it, 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 obviously, the, <laughs> you read the media and, and uh, occasionally I look at the social media and... Uh, you know, again, I think what is, is that the majority of our supporters and, and fans have been, you know, understanding of what a very, very difficult situation this is. And, um, you know, we've talked about how incredible it is that people are leaving their money in the club. We've had lots, you know, I've even had some supportive messages this morning. Uh, also had a few giving me a good kicking as well. But, um, and, and I don't think anybody, you know, when this started to happen, I think the first idea that this was going to be a series was around March the 8th and um, at that time you know people were assuming we we're going to play again by the end of April so I don't think anybody realized that it'd be 100 or 101 days later and here we are and you know as we've said on our previous uh, LTTV spots that um, this is all about how do we ensure the survival of Leicester Tigers and you know that's foremost in in all of our minds is, is, is at the end of the day, we have to ensure the survival of the Tigers. Are there things that you look back on? And obviously hindsight's a beautiful thing. Everyone enjoys looking back and telling you how you should have done something and it, that's fine. But are there certainly things you look back on and you think, while maybe not in a pandemic, hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't have to deal with another one when we're out of this, but do you think there are things you've certainly learnt as a board that you'll look back on and say, we will do things differently moving forward? No, I, I think definitely. And the whole communication piece, I think the whole, you know, LTTV is, is very helpful. And I think, um, you know, some of the uh, queries that we've read with, with the social media, you know, are, are absolutely right. I think the bit that's difficult is we would like to share everything with everybody, but actually we can't. And I think, you know, we are ultimately a club that's... Um, a, a, a public limited company. You know, we demutualized uh, many years ago and we still have somewhere around 11,000 um, people who are season ticket holders then who are shareholders. And, um, 
you know, we have a responsibility to, to them and everything. But I think we, we put a new board in place, which I'm, you know, you, you've interviewed Fintan, he's doing a, an unpaid outstanding job for us as finance director. And um, so I think you can always look back and say, we should have done something earlier, or we should have done this, that and the other. And, um, uh, and I am, you know, quite critical of myself as well. So, uh, and I fully understand, you know, how passionate all the supporters of the Tigers are and how confusing it must be. You know, you read, oh, 12 people here and 10 people there and all these sort of stories. And, um, uh, and you know, to, to, to see Manu moving on is, um, you know, I extremely sad for the club. But uh, obviously we wish him all the best. I guess it's a nice point to move forward because so much was mooted around July 1st being the start of a new look and a new era at the club. Obviously, you know, Steve Borthwick, Alad Walters. I mean, prior to July 1st, there was decisions made around the store coming back in-house. Obviously, Andrea Pynchon went into the role. Various things have fallen into place. Are you, at the same time as being disappointed in the last week with those handling, there must be a side of you and the board, speaking for the board now if you can, you must be happy and looking forward now that things are now in place, that here we are, the new looks arrived, Steve's in place, let's get on with the job at hand. No, absolutely. I mean, this is all about the future. And, and um, you know, we, we did the Paddy Howard review, which was, uh, you know, he was, he was pretty brutal. And, and, and it was, uh, um, you know, a lot of the criticism and, and uh, uh, suggestions that he made is where we are today. And, and I think, you know, we do go in, to the start of a new era um, from July the 1st. And, um, you know, I'm really excited by uh, the prospects for us. I think the board has met, you know, every week and um, we've gone through all of the different things. And I think it, we may be a bit, bit ahead of the game with some people. I think for us, coming back to the survival point, this is all about that. But, you know, we put in, in place now a world-class team, coaching team. And, um, you know, we're, we're all very excited by that. And, and um, we're hoping that, uh, you know, we'll be playing down at extra on, on uh, August the 15th. Obviously, one thing in sport that comes up quite a lot, and it's not exclusive to Leicester Tigers, is that you do have boards of directors and you have CEOs and they are a business and they are, as you say, PLCs. But if I can ask you without maybe crossing a line, the rugby side of Leicester Tigers, that is very much Jordan Murphy and Steve Borthwick's now, isn't it? It's hands off from a board and a executive perspective. No, absolutely. And, um, you know, I think that for me as well, partly what gives me confidence is that we made the changes to the academy three or four years ago. And, you know, Jed Glynn, who, who's now moved on, and, and we owe him a huge debt of gratitude in terms of, the changes that were made and, and uh, you know, to win the under 18 competition three years in a row and to see the number of, uh, in, in the squad for the, for the end of the 1920 season, the 21, 2021 season going forward, a huge number of, so I think the changes that we made there and the changes that we've made within the organization and, you know, Geordie will be director of rugby. Steve, Steve will be in charge of, of on the pitch, and it'll be up to them to get on with it. You mentioned the academy. There's no question now that those guys, especially when the recommencement of 1920 begins, as you say, hopefully in August. Fingers crossed. But um, there's no question that there is probably going to be some more weight on the shoulders of those young kids. It, it's probably fast tracked. I guess, their development a little bit. Are you confident that not only Jed, and as you say, he's owed a debt of gratitude, but the work of Dave Wilkes in particular, Matt Smith, and even Jamie Taylor Pryor, these are young men you're proud to see coming through? Oh, no, very, very proud. And I think for them, you know, and, and although as, as we joked on, on a previous uh, LT TV, um, you know, for me, one of the most amazing moments in my life, you know, was the first time you put a Tigers first team shirt on and run out and I think you know these guys will will have just the same thing and I think the most important element that I know that Steve you know Geordie and everybody else will be wanted to emphasize to the, the squad and was partly in you know part of the process that we went through uh, over the past few weeks is you know 
all they want is people that want to wear the tiger shirt. 100% wear the tiger shirt. You know. I want to ask you about Steve in a second and also the Pat Howard review you mentioned briefly, but Jordan Murphy, I mean, you've known Jordan a long, long time. You've seen Jordan go from a young Irish player with very bad hair into the club's most successful on-pitch player into head coach, now director of rugby, in particular in what's been, you could say, a baptism of fire in recent months and probably in the last 18 months in particular. How proud have you been of what Jordan has grown into now stepping in to officially be director of rugby? No, he's, he's been absolutely outstanding. And I remember him from a skinny young man, you know, uh, with the most amazing hands and, and feet and stuff. And um, the, the last, I think, for all of us, you included, Sam, you know, the last few weeks have been a real test of, of everybody and not in any way, you know, seeking the, the sympathy of anybody who, who's watching this. But, you know, you were on the call, the Zoom, I think, last night about eight o'clock. And, and, you know, most of the people... Uh, that have been involved in this have been, you know, 12, 14, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Jordy's been absolutely outstanding. And, you know, the, I think the hardest thing, and you, you see it in, in, in football particularly and in rugby, is to go from a player to being the coach. And that is a significant change in terms of, you know, how you, your responsibility and, and dealing with guys who were formerly your, your teammates and all those sort of things. And I think, in a in a strange way and always looking a little bit on the optimistic side i think this you know the past eight nine ten weeks have seen jordan grow incredibly and i'm i I can't thank him enough and certainly on behalf of everybody at the tigers he's just been outstanding i mentioned steve obviously he's commenced officially at the club he doesn't start coaching officially until phase two begins but in particular when the decision was made to bring Steve Borthwick in. What was it for you that was the, I guess, the most significant part of him that you thought that's the guy we want to lead our rugby program? Well, I think having you know played in the in in the in the scrum and stuff like that, you you <laughs> recognise um, and Steve as a player, you know, was always his own man, had a bit of the Prince of Darkness about him and things like that, uh, and then you know working with Eddie. He's been an outstanding, uh, you know, coach in the England setup. And um, what I liked in terms of our initial conversations was, you know, he, in a very different way to Paddy Howard. But he, you know, he told us straight what he felt uh, were the issues that we, we needed to sort out and that how he was going to do it. And, and he's, in fact, and I think he's going to be outstanding for us. Absolutely, naturally outstanding. You mentioned Pat Howe. We obviously spoke to him in between the last time you and I spoke on here. Yeah. He was, you know, as Paddy is always, he was extremely forthcoming with the information. But I want to touch on one thing he said, was, which is this spine he constantly alludes to of uh, chairman, CEO, coach, captain. Are you confident that that spine is in a much better place now as of July 1st moving forward? No, completely. And I think, you know, if, if we've learned anything out of this is we just have to be completely honest with each other. And, you know, we've got to, I mean, Pat believes you shouldn't have shut doors. You should, you know, if you've got something to say, you should say it and stuff. And I think he was absolutely right. And I think certainly, you know, that, as you say, the spine is, is absolutely there. And um, I'm, you know, very, very excited about And I'm looking forward, hopefully, to playing our first game. I guess from a fan's perspective, before we do wrap up, you are in touch with Premiership Rugby, if not daily, weekly. Um, Andrea alluded, hopefully the season will just pick up and start from where it was meant to on August 15th. Is there any confirmation you can give to supporters out there? Well, I, I think the, the good thing that you know, has been announced is the fixtures through to uh, the final at, at the end of October. And then the season... 2021 starting at the end of November, which is, is good news. Um, so I think, um, you know, Hadj, who's our doctor, who you know extremely well, is, is uh, very, very involved in the whole process that leads up to contact training on Monday and then to uh, full-on matches. And he's, uh, he, he gave me a report yesterday of where we are and what we have to do, which is, um, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's pretty... Uh, um, 
not 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 the easiest of staff to grasp. But so no, I, I think everybody is preparing, subject to unfortunately what we've seen in Leicester in the last few days, and and hopefully doesn't happen in in other spots to the season starting. You know, on that uh, weekend of August the fifteenth, I think the bit that's probably going to be the hardest in terms of player welfare is to get into that timetable. We're going to have to play some midweek games. But as a far, that, everybody's confident that it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it's it's so unprecedented. We're not quite sure what we have to do, but we know we're going to have to do some things differently. Yeah. I think as a final point, and it's a little bit open-ended, but what I want to know is, is there anything out there you can say to fans about how confident or how excited you are and despite what has been, you know, not a, an amazing period, in, but for all clubs and all sports and the world over, it's not a Leicester Tigers issue, but for Leicester Tigers fans in particular, is there anything you want to say now that this new look and, and new era is officially beginning? No, I, I, want, I want to be able to, uh, um, you know, to get Tigers back to the top. That's what we have to do. You know, all everything that we're doing in terms of Steve coming in, Alan, you know, rather than everybody else, is all part of getting to back to the top again. And, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, some of the people who, quite correctly, in that way, you run out in front of the breeding stand, <laughs> who are uh, usually pretty critical. You know, being able to put my arm around them and and, and say, you know, we're we're back where we should be. So you don't know, do you, uh, who these re-signings are for next week? Because everyone's alluding to them, but they're obviously part of the future. I, I think you're probably better to ask Jordy when you next speak to him. <laughs> Everyone just tells me that all the time. And he gives me nothing. He gives me nothing. Aren't you at Oval Park now? Can't you go and listen at the door with your oh, ear? Yeah, I might have a look at Jan's office. I might send him a, a fake meeting request and then go into That's his office. idea. <laughs> See how we go. But Peter, I appreciate your time. Um, sure. And, you know, I, I appreciate that it's, um, it's been a very difficult period, but uh, onward and upward for Leicester Tigers. No, absolutely. No, we're going back to the top, definitely. Thank you, Peter.